Okay, so this may or may not be uh, worth making a video. If I post it, then it was worth it. So, today we have a 1998 Jeep Cherokee with a uh, check engine light code, uh, P0445 or 455, I think it's 445. It's a large EVAP leak. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what this looks like. So this is the code that we're getting right here, P0455, Evaporative Emission System Large Leak Detected. So that was the issue we were getting. And if we go up to the top here, we can see that our oxygen sensor monitor is inconclusive. And so is our catalyst monitor. I don't know if that also has something to do with the um, the code or whatever, but yeah, that's our issue. So, uh, yeah, what did I do? I went to YouTube and watched a video too. So now I'm a genius, right? Okay, so I know that we got some EVAP things over here, and uh, basically what we're looking for is a vacuum leak somewhere in the EVAP system. So I don't know if this is going to work, but uh, basically we got an EVAP test port over here, one PSI max, and uh, there's a Schrader valve in here. <laughs> and of course I don't have the tool for that because uh, it's deeper than um, most tire Schrader valves. So what did I do? I took a paintbrush and cut a slot down the middle. <laughs> Uh, it is also reverse thread, so you have to tighten it, loosen it, righty loosey. So believe it or not, this stupid little thing actually worked. I just grinded a slot in it, and she opens right up. So a little WD-40 goes a long way. So what we're going to do is we're going to jerry-rig a uh, vacuum line up to an air compressor and uh, blow some air through here and see if we can hear some hissing and uh, hopefully find the leak. Because that's basically what a smoke shop does, I would assume. They just put some uh, UV dyed smoke in the system and they uh, look around with their little light and see if they can find the leak. So we're going to have to use our ears instead of our eyes and uh, see if anything comes up. Okay, so here's the idea. We got ourselves a, an air compressor. Uh, but the important thing is having some kind of adjustability. Okay, over here we have a valve that we can actually control the pressure. So it's foggy as all hell, so you can't really tell what's going on, but this is the tank pressure and this is your output pressure. So what we can do is loosen this all the way until there's nothing, and actually this one will stop to the point where uh, there is no pressure in here. So right now, uh, I turn it basically all the way off, and then I rotate it just a little bit until we get a little pressure. That thing said 1 PSI max. You can go a little bit more, but you realize you have to be at 1. These things go up to 120, so you don't want to blow your system out. So you want to make sure there's some kind of adjustability. I know sometimes they sell little um, adapters that you can put on here uh, that will just put out a little bit. It's like a little you know, slide whistle looking thing almost that you can control the pressure. But you want a really, really low amount of pressure. So we're going to hook uh, this guy up. To the pressure port, just a 3 8 inch tube, a rubber, you know, vacuum line that fits in there. And uh, I guess we're going to see if we can find some hissing. Oh boy. Okay, so here's the one-man do-it-yourself backyard mechanic evap tester. Uh, so we got one vice grip to actually hold the, uh, the airflow. Uh, I don't have a proper hose one, so I just found the biggest one I could find to try to block this off a little bit. This is the fresh air vent. There's still air leaking out of it, but a little less than before. So there's no Schrader valve in there, we just got the tube from there to there. And then you just keep turning this up until you can start to hear a little leak, alright? You don't want to go very far. Again, this, this isn't supposed to have a lot of pressure on it. This would be great if you could have an inline um, vacuum gauge or pressure gauge or something so you could see if it's holding pressure, if it's dropping, you know, shit like that. But, you know, for a backyard fix like this, what are you going to do? Okay, so now we're going to start uh, listening for the hissing. Uh, this thing's out of air so you can't hear it. This thing was hissing out a little bit and it's a little hard to figure out, but I figured it was something down below. So uh, let's go down there and see if we can find anything. Okay, so here we are next to the rear driver tire in the back. So I'm hearing some hissing kind of all over the place, but I started to put my finger on the hose over here, this rusty line, and you can actually hear hissing there. I don't know if you can hear that. So we're gonna got a leak right here so that's part of our issue interesting that's behind the uh, gas tank this right here is the uh, evap canister I think my compressor to air okay but we know that this rust ass hard line definitely has to be replaced so you know kind of obvious but at least we know what's going on Huh. 
Maybe we got a bad gas cap too. Interesting. That was hissing. Oh, son of a bitch. Look at that. Hello. Giant crack. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. So she needs a new gas cap and she needs a new line. All right. Ain't that cool, eh? Eh? I guess EVAP system isn't that bad when you just use basic stuff like this. Use your ears instead of trying to figure out the systems and all that. Because they do have a vacuum diagram over here, but who the heck's going to sit there and try to figure this damn thing out? But yeah, you got the hissing? You close this guy up and... Uh... Yeah, son of a gun, she's hissing. Huh. Cool. Alright, so it looks like we need a gas cap and we'll need to do something about that line. Yeah, they said they took this to a shop. A shop did like $400 worth of work on it, whatever the heck that means. Probably putting it on a lift, scratching their head a lot and going, I don't know. But yeah. So I finally wrestled that thing out of there, so that's what this guy looks like. This is the rubber part that goes onto the canister over here. And then this part over to the uh, the line farther back. So I got this up on jack stands just so I'm not crawling on my back. You know what's better than jack stands? A lift. <laughs> Vehicle lifts are cool too, but it's nice not having to jack that thing up to crawl underneath it. And there's, you know, no codes when the EVAP doesn't work, but that's besides the point. Okay. So, uh, yeah, she's a little rusty. Um... I don't know if I'll be able to buy this piece or not, but it looks simple enough. I mean, you could really just run any kind of tubing. I mean, it looks like we only got like a a little flare on the end of that. So, I mean, if you really wanted, you could probably just make this out of brake line. Okay, so pro tip, if you don't got the finger strength to break rubber hoses uh, free from metal lines or anything like that, the absolute best tool I've found for that is channel locks. Channel locks will grab the rubber and really helps to bite in to break it free but it doesn't usually cut them up so yeah if you ever can't get a uh, rubber on there a little channel lock action to free it up a little wd lubricant comes right off cool beans okay so i went to the store got some uh, quarter inch line this is that copper nickel crap so it should be a little easier to uh, bend now obviously this is flared for brake lines so the flare is a little bit different but the thing is it's going on a rubber hose okay so that hose is nice and flexible. It's not going to have this little bit at the end, so that kind of sucks. But whatever. I just want to see if, uh, you know, we can track down this leak somewhere else. So we're going to bend that all around and slip it on in. And uh, we got a new gas cap too. So no more leaky leaky there, hopefully. Can't use our little flipper anymore, so that sucks. But it's just a stamp cap with a good seal. Beautiful. Okay. All right, put that in there and see what we get next. All right, so it ain't the prettiest, but it's better than what was there before. It's a little long, so I had to fold it a little differently, but all right, we're all connected back up. So let's turn on our air supply and see if we have any leaks. All right, so I didn't have time to actually film it, but I didn't see any more air leaks, so let's clear the code and see what happens. Say goodbye, papi. Yes. See check engine? No more check engine. Excellent. All right, now we just gotta drive it around and see what happens. Well, this thing doesn't get to see the road because it's not registered yet, but uh, Still no check engine light so far. I started it up a couple times and we're good. So I think that finally did it. So, you know, there's uh, one way to check out your EVAP system if you got a check engine light. See what's leaking, but go light on the pressure.